Welcome back to Yambling Yowies with Ingrid and Peter. This episode, we find a fabulous free camp in Parachula Gorge, just off the Flinders Ranges, and then we head off to learn all about how the Flinders Ranges were created over 700 million years ago. Stay tuned. All right, we made it to the next campground for a couple nights. Right in a riverbed. Here comes Peter. Yeah, lots of goats here. Like you can see the goats climbing up the hills over here. So, should be good for the next couple nights. Free camp. There you go, guys. We've just made it to um, Parachula Gorge after doing the Birdsville track. And uh, I'll just show you our campsite. It's a pretty cool campsite. It's, it's really. So we're in the sort of middle of the gorge here. Trees around. It's a bit of cloudy sky today. A bit of rain last night. But it's amazing, rain's way upstream up there, and then this morning you'll see it trickling down here, like, and then it dis just disappears. It's pretty cool. Anyway, that's, this is Parachula Gorge, our camp for a few days. We'll explore the Flinders Ranges. Well, that's where the southern Yowies live. You think? Well, yeah, because they're hardier down here. There's not much water. And it's a bit of a, a bit desert dwelling Yowies. They are, so they're quite okay. Oh. I don't understand how you don't know this stuff. Well, um, that's why I have you. You can educate me on it. We're uh, doing a little trail. It's a, what's it called? A geological trail. In the Flinders Ranges. In the Flinders Ranges. So we're at the Flinders Ranges. Um, bit exciting, amazing place. It looks, the pitch, the mountain scenery is amazing. So how did the Flinders Ranges come to be? About 50 million years ago, forces in the Earth's crust folded the area of the Flinders Ranges basically into a broad dome around 50 kilometers across. And then with erosion, it basically made the mountains or hills that you see today. And because of that folding of the Earth's crust, you can see multiple different layers that's basically created the Flinders Ranges. So we're gonna do the geological trail. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from oldest to youngest. So here's a, just a kind of a timeline so that you can see what type of rocks are in this area. So we're starting here at the oldest. So 70 or 720 million years ago. And then we'll work our way all up, way up to Wolapina and then 539 million. So yeah, I think these are all the places you can stop to see the different ones. Yeah. Let's go. All right, let's hit it. So we just stopped at the first trailhead. 
It's a bit of a what's this ruins here, Ingrid? So this stone fireplace is basically the only remnants left here of the Yunganuya hut. So basically this hut or home, whatever you want to call it, was an outstation used by shepherds tending flocks of sheep before the introduction of fencing. So this started around 1850s. All right, well, we'll start the trail here, eh? Yeah, Apparently they have these here. Off the trail into Verona Creek to see 15 to 50 centimeter diameter, diameter fossilized mounds like structures. Right, here we go. Get on this little train. Have a look at that, it looks magnificent. They're all of them here, like that, that, those bigger ones. Down. And then down there. So what are they, fossils of some sort? Yeah. Oh, the water is falling. Yeah, okay. Beautiful scenery here though. Eh? All right, we found this little grave on the side. Well, on a trail here, we're just going to have a look at Emma Smith's grave. I don't know what significance she's got with it. Well, let's have a bit of a look. Must be a pretty old grave. What do you reckon, Ingrid? What, in the middle of nowhere? Yeah. We find the weirdest places where they've got cemeteries or graves in our travels. I suppose this would have been a um, sheep station back in the day and this is where they thought it was a good idea to leave a grave. Uh, it looks pretty old doesn't it? Oh here's a park here. Emma Smith, age two, who died here during the transportation of copper from Blinman to Port Augusta. 1860s. Anyway, that's Emma Smith's grave. All right, let's get back in the car and go a bit further, eh? So many emus, I can't believe how many emus there are. So we've just banged the fly and it's on because the flies are getting pretty friendly out here. Anyway, we're going to try this this next one, this next little trail we found. Strygamite. Must be these rocks. All the way out there, so all these little rocks here, this this here sort of shape. Isn't it? Yeah.
Probably just one line. Yeah, going up like that. The carrion golden spike. They basically put a marker. Um, For that is marker. Yeah. To mark the transition from the cryogenian to the the carrion. I don't know how far we Up here. I'll just go up here and see how far it is. Just check out the scenery. It's amazing, I reckon. It's pretty cool. It'd be nice to see this flowing river here, but I reckon it never flows. Probably did 300 million years ago. 50 metres. Well, we'll keep walking, hey? Looks like the all, everything's in bloom. Flowers are blooming. You can hear the bees, the gum trees. It's a nice little platform that they made here. So the Edicarian period, so that line marks where basically the world went from single-celled microorganisms to basically life as we know it today. The multi-celled organisms, plants, animals. So that's what that line there means? Yeah. Oh. From single-cell to multi-cell. Yeah, well single-cell basically to what thought of animal life and That's pretty fascinating. I don't think these steps are legal. Oh, there it is. So that's the marker of the different eras or times. This is the older stuff is on the bottom, I suppose, Ingrid, is it? And the younger stuff's above it. Is that right? Probably. Sounds about right. Okay, we're back in the car. What have we done? Three little trails so far, Ingrid. They've been pretty interesting, haven't they? Mm. Well, if you like rocks, if you don't like geology, then maybe it wouldn't be that interesting. I know I'm still wearing my fly net. This year, just don't have to take it off. Anyways, go on to the next ones. Bit of a bit of a gorge. There's so many goats around this area here, they've got 
they're everywhere. They're, um, what do you call it? They're doing a feral eradication. When was that? November. Yeah, it's a, they're and starting end of November. End of November. All the way till October of 2024, so basically a year. What? The whole year's going to be closed. In the evenings. Oh, yeah. They use helicopters fly around shooting them. But. Now we're a lookout. What lookout's this? Aruna Valley lookout. So the Aruna Valley lookout really stems from an aboriginal dreamtime story about a kingfisher and two serpents. So the kingfishers wanted everybody to meet and the two serpents came up seeing that they had set fires telling everybody to come into where the Willapena Pound area is. And so the serpents crept up the sides of the mountains and came down and devoured everybody. And then everybody... That Just driving down the river. Is it which gorge is it, Ingrid? Um, one, I don't know. One of the gorges, so we just said the close. When flooding. When yeah. flooding, because we're driving pretty much in the middle of the, at the bottom of the river. Pretty rough. Not too bad though. No. Well, we've seen some small little cars on the road, so. It We found another lookout. <laughs> Razorback lookout. So finally we came to Razorback lookout. And this is one of those lookouts that if you love rocks, you're a geologist or even a biologist, you're really going to be able to look out and see the different layers and kind of see how things have changed um, from that marine life type era uh, to what it is today. Well, that's a wrap for Parachula Gorge. The rain has started to come in and there's a chance there could be a bit of flash flooding. So I figured we'd leave Parachula Gorge since we're right in the riverbed and head over to Willapena Pound to continue our adventures in the Flinders Range. So stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, like, comment. Uh, we'd love to hear what you think. And if you have any questions, we'll make sure to answer each and every one of you. Thanks for now.